Hello and welcome to today's vodcast on Procter & Gamble's supply chain. My name is Ben Olshow and I'm a supply chain manager for P&G. I'm here today with three of my star employees to give you a better understanding of our intricate and dazzling supply network. Let's journey from the heart of the Keystone State to our Cincinnati, Ohio headquarters to take a closer look. Hey kids, I'm tour guide Christian Petridis and welcome to the factory. The Procter & Gamble company began as a small soap and candle business in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1837. Today, P&G provides consumer packaged goods to over 4 billion consumers in 180 countries. The company operates in three global business units or GBUs, beauty and grooming, health and well-being, and household care. Amongst these categories include 23 brands with more than $1 billion in net annual sales each. Some of the most popular include Bounty, CoverGirl, Oral-B, Pampers, Pringles, and Duracell. The company sells its products through retail operations including mass merchandisers, grocery stores, membership club stores, drug stores, department stores, salons, and high frequency stores. P&G also maintains a close relationship with Walmart which accounts for 20% of P&G's sales. Excellent work Christian. My name is Andrew and I will be speaking about a typical supply network for one of P&G's brands which is displayed in the figure on your screen. To further examine the supply chain of a subsidiary of Procter & Gamble, we will focus on the Tide brand. The raw materials are processed through New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Missouri. The raw materials are then shipped to production and packaging plants in several other states. The end product is then finally transported to TC, DCs, or retailers. The overarching theme of P&G's agent-based supply network is current information shared between all links of the supply chain on the company's central SAP data system. Even small problems such as a tire blowout on one delivery truck are linked to a central information hub which will automatically send an alternative truck. From manufacturing facility to scanner data at individual retailers, all links of the supply chain network are integrated. P&G's factories are all also designed to be highly adaptable, termed flexi plants, these manufacturing facilities have tremendously quick turnaround on orders. To help manage this global supply network, Procter & Gamble uses two different software systems to streamline operations and optimize efficiency. The first software system is SAP, Brand Enterprise Resource Planning Software, otherwise known as SAP ERP. SAP ERP consists of several modules including utilities for marketing and sales, field service, product design and development, production and inventory control, human resources, finance and accounting. SAP ERP collects and combines data from the separate modules to provide the company with an integrated business solution. The second software company we use is Legility Incorporated. This software company provides us with VITO or Voyager Inventory Target Optimization and VISO or Voyager Inventory Strategy Optimization software. Legility software was added in recent years to help us with inventory optimization and workflow. To integrate Legility and SAP technologies, a standard multi-echelon work process using the SAP platform was developed. As part of this software, planners receive data on a monthly workflow, compare with recommended safety stock level, and upload them back into the appropriate SAP systems. Stupendous explanations, Andrew. Follow me and watch your step as we dig deeper into the supply chain. Procter & Gamble uses a customer-driven supply chain. Software shared between suppliers, distributors, and retailers create data that tells Procter & Gamble exactly what, when, and where to ship. According to the September 2006 essay, Forces of Business and Forces of Nature, Procter & Gamble's supply chain is built around the underlying idea that the consumer is boss. This is representative of a lean supply chain. All aboard, Captain Inger here, taking you on a journey to Western Europe figure on your screen illustrates how the customer-driven strategy was successfully implemented in the Western European fabric and home care sector of Procter & Gamble. The graph depicts steady customer service in conjunction with a large decrease in inventory. P&G has a responsive supply chain. They have adjusted their manufacturing plants to be more flexible in order to quickly adjust to changes in demand. In addition, Procter & Gamble maintains a high level of contact with their major distributors through specialized software that tracks product sales. Due to the size of P&G and its largest retailer, Walmart, the two companies have integrated much of their data. This integration allows for faster deliveries between the two firms so goods can quickly be replaced. 
Recently, Procter & Gamble has been restructuring its supply network to better track and estimate demand without switching to an efficient style of supply chain. This is done to minimize holding costs and lost profits from missed sales due to out-of-stock items. One of the newest strategies helping to limit out-of-stock items in retail stores was the implementation of a new system known as EPC, or Electronic Product Code. The EPC is a product identifier that provides a unique identification for individual objects. The EPC was implemented by P&G to help solve the problems of retail theft and counterfeiting. P&G tries to have no more than 12% of items out of stock at one time in order to maximize profits. In a P&G case study, Larry Kellum, Director of Business to Business Supply Chain Innovation for Procter & Gamble, stated that P&G was 100% supportive of the EPC system, but not supportive of the RFID system. Well, that concludes our tour today, folks. Remember to buy Procter & Gamble products the next time you're at your local grocery store or Walmart. From us at Procter & Gamble, over and out. <laughs>